What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Uh, I'm joined once again by Ben D. Uh, and we're going to take a look at skateboarding wood shops. Yep, skateboarding wood shops, because not a lot of people know that um, almost all of the boards you see on a wall come from most of the time just two places. Mm -hmm. So they're all made in the same place, like skateboard companies. Um, 90 over 90% of the time aren't actually making their own boards. They have them made somewhere. Right. So there's to their specs, maybe. These smaller companies now, right, are just sort of using like default templates and stuff and just yep. putting their graphic on it. Yeah, you can get the same boards. Even even some of the bigger companies, you can get the same boards in like four or five different companies. Right. Right. Which is funny because I think you know, the assumption is, especially with a lot of newer skaters, I mean, as somebody who's on TikTok and I've poked around YouTube a little bit, you can find videos about people's personal experiences with, with skateboarding companies saying, oh, well, you know, these guys suck and these guys are dope. When the skateboards are may or may not have been from the same exact place, it's just the graphic that's different. There's a lot of misinformation, I think, about this subject, and I'm not super well informed about this either so this is going to be a learning experience uh for me as well yeah it's a it's an interesting thing to know about and it also helps you narrow down your board choices because you can be like oh i loved that board and i'll never find it again because this company just went tits up and it's like right yeah the wood shop didn't yeah right <laughs> so right. just to give a really quick example like a really well-known wood shop is ps sticks right so that's paul schmidt so I was, I was scoping out boards in a shop one day and I looked at a 8.25 GX100 quasi and there was one other, I can't even remember what it was, all 825, all the exact same shape. Like really? they're just literally, yeah, they're the exact same board. So in a lot of cases, um, in a lot of cases, companies might have their own kind of signature shapes about the board, but a lot of the time they'll literally just be running the exact same board. Saying, I got to make some videos about how to fix the door. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is the guy, I live in a renovated garage. This was a three car garage. Mm -hmm. And the guy is like the building inspector for, for Glendale. But for some reason, that door just ain't quite right. Yeah, it's uh, just the latch. It just needs to be adjusted. Anyways, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> a couple of things we need to talk about real quick is... Um, I'm going to be using only the biggest wood shops for this video to narrow things down. Only the ones that do like many multiple uh, board companies. And also if you need a reference for all of this stuff, or you want to know where maybe your four favorite boards are made, go to the slap wood shop directory. So just look up, like literally just type slap wood shop thread. And every year the people like to update that and all the, you know, people that slap that do their thing. Anyways, that's where you're going to want to go to really find out the details. So does the, does the directory have like all the updated stuff, like say Baker's using a certain wood shop last year and then this year they switched to a different wood shop. Is that, that's where you're going to find that information? Yes. Yes, because companies switch around a lot too. Cause maybe you noticed that you tried something a few years ago and you loved it and then you tried another one you're like what why is this so right, different right so right. that does happen a lot we'll get into a little bit of that with some companies cool okay so i think i'm going to start with some of the smaller ones and work our way up to the more well-known ones um there's a few here that i have no experience i'm mostly going to be talking about ones that i've actually skated mm -hmm. that i have experience with so there's a few here that i have no experience with that i'm going to really quickly rifle off um, one is Prime. They do stereo among a, a good handful of other companies. Prime also used to do all the world industry stuff way back in the day. So um, they're a California based one. If you have good experiences with them or bad, let us know in the comments. Are they still in business? Yeah, Prime's still around. Yeah. And they make stereo boards. Stereo and a bunch of other people. There's Watson. They were around for a while. I think Watson used to do zero boards back in the day. I don't know who they do now, um, but they're still around. There's PGI, which is, I think, I think that's like Pierre Luc Gagnon, that vert skater from the yeah, late 90s, early 2000s. That guy I think. was sick. I think that's his wood shop. PGI. Really? I think so. And um, 
they i heard somebody said they did girl for a little bit like mm-hmm. maybe early 2000s before girl moved their production all over to china um that's another thing this can get political the whole where does your board come from oh please <laughs> let's do it um i don't care really like i care a little bit and but i'm not getting into it in this video personally <laughs> okay. but it, you know like there there is something to be said for like where is your money going which um country and which right. political agendas is it supporting what's good guys Nigel houston here excited to be a partner with wish you world and the new nft project uh, but you know with skateboarding that's getting tough because more and more of our favorite products are all getting outsourced so. yeah it does feel like skateboarding in general is uh getting a little bit political which maybe you haven't seen that much of because you made the intellectuals decision to get off instagram but i'll just say the the water's been a little hot recently has it been oh great. yeah well welcome back well the great ann robinson is in the studio are you with me in just a couple of moments hello you can hello. hear me what happened? taylor silverman is a world-class skateboarder yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir we make it look easy Oh, Enjoy. yeah, yeah. Things Enjoy. Are... <laughs> PGI, and there's Woodchuck. That's another Southern California wood shop. I have no idea what they do, but there's four right off the bat. Okay. So now let's go across the pond um, to one called Jart. Now this Ah, oh, Jart. Jart or HLC. HLC is the wood shop. Okay. So they do a lot of, even a lot of the American, American brands um, actually have all their boards for the European market made over there. Plan B recently switched to HLC for all of their boards. I was planning on getting some Plan B boards and trolling you, like just sending you pictures of Plan B graphics all the time. And um, oh my god! But, yeah, I, I was. I couldn't wait to troll you with this. Ew! One. Uh, that's <laughs> I actually hideous. love the colors personally. I love the purple and the yellow. The graphic is whatever. But uh-huh. I actually like the colors. And then it's got like black plies in between a couple of yellow plies. I like that. Just so we're on the same page with this, this board was made in Europe somewhere. Yeah, Spain. I think HLC is Spain. Okay, so made in Europe and then shipped over to Canada. Yeah, yeah. Well, shipped probably to the US and then probably back to Canada. Okay. Are you aware of anything that can sort of like affect a skateboard's performance based off of how far it may have to travel from its, you know, point of production. Well, that's a tough one because um, a lot of people say that, but they're pretty well wrapped, you know, Mm -hmm. like they they, like, no, I don't think it actually makes a big difference. I think maybe a lot of heat would make a big difference, but in terms of like moisture getting into them while the boards are going overseas, I don't actually think that happens because each board is individually shrink wrapped, usually for starters. Right. And then it, it'll be like wrapped in a box, which will be tucked among a bunch of other boxes inside a container. Like, I don't think that that actually affects um, the boards as much as people think. In my experience, unless I've left my skateboard in the car for literally like five days in a row, mm. then I, I notice like just my experience, I notice pretty minimal performance uh, decrease. In terms of warpage, I don't think, unless they get exposed to a lot of moisture or like totally different conditions, I don't think most boards are going to warp. And I think they just warp sometimes because wood is like every piece of wood is different. You're never Mm going to get the same piece of wood again. And some of it's going to warp. Some of it isn't like how many times have you had, you know, I leave stuff in all kinds of like I have piles of boards all over the place and I never pay much attention to how I'm stacking them or what I do. Right. And you know, none of them warp but once in a while i come across a warp board usually by the time it's already hit the distributor Um, ideally ideally what you want is you want all boards from the same mold all flat together right like you know because then they're going to be putting all the pressure in the same places and it's yeah so for sure there is like poor ways to store boards but i think most of the time people take pretty good care to not do that both in the distributors and in shops so Mm -hmm. I think just sometimes boards warp and also a small amount of warp is actually not a big deal. Like some people are super neurotic about that. And I think a lot of people would expect me to be, but I can easily skate a board with an eighth of warp. By the time you're standing on it, it's not even warped. Like boards are pretty flexible. 
Mm-hmm. You know, by the time you're actually standing on it with both your full weight, yeah, it kind of evens out. So it's not until it gets like a quarter inch of warp on a board. And then right. it's like, then it's going to make some tricks awesome and some tricks really bad. Maybe you like a little more concave for your heel flips. <laughs> and, and one side of your board is riding up a little higher. Do you want to talk about your experience with the plan B board? Yeah, a little bit. That's the okay. idea. Is, cool. is So what I want to <laughs> talk about with each wood shop as quickly as we can is I want to talk about um the pop like how the how the board feel the concave the weight and the weight and thickness durability mm-hmm. and would i use them as a wood shop like if i was a brand would i actually buy their boards this was a weird board and i the reason that i wanted to get plan b boards and troll you is because they used to use ps and that's the the regular stock ps mold is one of my favorite molds i don't want to get too much into it yet but this wood is different. I, I don't actually like it. It's a little bit thicker than most boards, you know, like probably half a mil or something, but I can feel it, right? right. I can feel it here and I can feel it when I ride. So it has a duller kind of thud. Like when you mm. tap the board, it just, it sounds different. Um, it actually felt way too stiff when I first uh, started riding it. And you'll notice if a board's too stiff, like some people think, Oh, board can't be too stiff, but it can. Like if it doesn't, it definitely can. Yeah. If it doesn't have the right flex, your tricks don't pop properly. And you just feel like you're riding a two by four. So at first this had that feel, but it kind of let go a little bit mid session, but it also started creaking and groaning. Mm. And that's a big red flag to me. It's almost like it started off too stiff and then it's just going to go to eventually soggy. Like, do you know what I mean? When a board starts creaking, cracking and creaking and growing yeah. yeah yeah like that's a that's a red flag to me i didn't like that so unfortunately that's what this did i have to just be totally honest and um yeah please so. don't disparage the good name of plan b on my youtube channel i have an immaculate track record with that company <laughs> up until this point yeah. I think they should go back to PS. Okay. I, you know what? My my theory for why they would, would switch over to thicker boards is because they're, they're top level pro, their most elite pro. One of the most snap inducing tricks ever, Aurelian Giroux does hard mm-hmm. flip front board. Mm-hmm. And maybe he snapped a thousand fucking maybe. plan B boards doing that trick. So they had to find a, a supplier who maybe. would make thicker boards. So what I've heard, and is it's marginal. Most people won't notice how the thickness, right? This is mm-hmm. like we're we're splitting hairs here, but I can feel the difference. Yeah. Um, it, it like makes my timing feel different. Every and and the flex is off. So um I've heard that it's kind of a polarizing wood shop. People either love it or hate it. Mm-hmm. And you you can read people saying that no, they're great stiff boards that last forever, maybe a little heavy. And then you can read people saying no, they sogged out in like a day. So you can read all kinds of stuff about that wood shop and it's, it really varies. So you would not. Oh yeah. Okay. So uh, I mean, I tried it two days, right? Let's be honest, (laughs) but like, let's be honest. I tried it two days, but like, as soon as it started creak, like I'm setting up for Nolly heels and it's just Mm -hmm. like, like, no, (laughs) like that's, I, I can't skate boards that creak. Because yeah. like, as soon as I hear it, it messes with my head and it throws off my tricks. So well, I that's also it. two days. If it started creaking after two days. Uh... Uh, so I've, I've actually, here's the thing. The creaking often only lasts a few days. Like I've had a lot of boards where they, they creak and groan. And that's like the first sign of them about to let go. And so they do all their, they do all their creaking and groaning. And then they're, they're, then they're kind of soggy after that. And so that's why I was like, I don't know, this whole thing just, it was rubbing me the wrong way. So, so, so you skated it for two days and then it started showing signs of mortality yeah. <laughs> after that. Um, I can't let, let's, <laughs> let's let the people in the comments tell us what those boards do. Cause for sure you got some European skaters that ride these boards that can, you know, either come to their defense or throw them under the bus. I think they're the European skaters are probably just going to defend the European manufacturer because I already get in trouble for not talking about anything that European people do on my channel. Beloved dog, I have returned home from the Olympics. Master William, long have I waited on your arrival. How did you fare? Never mind that lawyer hound. Would you like to see my new Plan B Pro model? Why yes, I am always absolutely mind blown by your awesome graphics. So 
So yeah, but the fussy ones won't. The bored <laughs> the princesses won't ones. come to their defense. Uh, uh, Not if they don't like them. <laughs> so you wouldn't if you had a skateboarding. Well, wouldn't you do be my have first a, choice. You do have a skateboarding company, don't you? I did that for a little bit. Okay. That, I decided that I'd rather leave skate the skateboarding business to the people whose livelihoods depend on it. And I want to enjoy skateboarding. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely understand that. Okay, so you wouldn't... Um... No, it wouldn't be my first choice. If I was in Europe, I might consider it. And, and I didn't try it long enough to really make an, a fair assessment. Mm-hmm. But it, it, it was like... It sh- uh, my my quick gut assessment was like, no, I'd rather try something else. In my opinion, you only need to give a product as long as it like deserves, I guess. And if it's if if the board started doing something you really didn't like after two days of using it, mm-hmm. it takes me half an hour to know if I would choose a board or not. It would take me a month of skating that board continuously to know whether or not I would risk selling that to people. Because that's two different things. Right. Can I skate it for a set? You know, will it last me a week? And can I skate well on it? Mm-hmm. And would it be good value to a consumer? This one, I wasn't convinced on either because I didn't really enjoy how it skated. And okay. I didn't know what it was going to do long term. Anyways, if we s- spend this much time on the wood chest, we'll never get to the good ones. I need to just really quick. They're about to apparently Zoom makes you pay now. So mm. I'm just going to v- rapidly pay for this so it doesn't kick us off yeah i can see it ticking down i know i did, didn't do this last time 703 oh my god this is <laughs> insane they didn't um, do it last time no i don't know what the deal is like the charging for oh my god you bastards it's all tax deductible right yep yep it is <laughs> well i mean i'm sure you guys have better tax laws than we do here do I live in California, so I don't, oh, maybe I don't not. Know. Maybe not. I think we probably have something similar, except I have to pay if I break my leg. Uh, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, that whole thing. That one. Not to get mm-hmm. political or anything. Oh, this meeting has unlimited minutes. Oh, cool. You said we could. You said we had to rush. Now we don't. We can talk. We can talk wood shops forever. Yeah. All right. Uh, next. Next. Next shop. Okay. Okay. So this one I actually haven't skated, but I just wanted to give another shout out to another wood shop. Um, Penswood is one from uh, it's Pennsylvania. Apparently, they make really decent boards. Let me know in the comments what do you think about Penswood wood? Wow this this viewer engagement is off the charts, baby. <laughs> this is there's gonna be so okay. many comments. Now we're gonna get to another um, U.S. brand. I think it might be Alabama. I could be wrong. Alabama? South Central Manufacturing. So, and and I actually talked to the owner because when I was trying to get boards made, um, I did get a couple samples from them. They sent me out a couple samples mid or no, early pandemic. But when the time came to actually try and get some boards made, um, they couldn't do it, right? They Uh couldn't couldn't find people to work. You know, like things were really tough at that, at that exact time. South Central makes a nice strong board. They're a little bit, very slightly on a thicker board, but I couldn't really tell, but they, they like really hard, like a uh-huh. good hard board that felt like it was going to last a long time. I think I skated it a month. Um, their steep concave, I think are good, strong boards. Their mellow concave was too mellow for my taste. Like, you know, when you get a board and even when it's brand new, the tail hits so fast mm-hmm. and um, you just can't get pop on it. I had a couple of those. It seems like a good time to be in the wood shopping business since everybody is starting their own skateboarding company now. Yeah. So. It's definitely um they make the rules. The you know? wood shops do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It, when I was trying to negotiate with all the wood shops and just like and I don't even mean price, I just mean actually getting anything made. I, right. Most people I just couldn't. It was it well, was because the limits were too high or what? No, because well, part of it was um pandemic stuff like supply Mm -hmm. chain issues were huge right so even just getting boards out to their main people was impossible Mm -hmm. you know it was very hard so it was the worst time to try and start something right but i think south central makes good boards but the mellow concave was too mellow and that was the mellow concave one started creaking like in the first session but it didn't let go it stayed the same so Mm -hmm. 
and it only lasted for like one or two days and it stopped creaking. So I did actually manage to ride that board a few weeks. I didn't realize while I was recording, but I've actually skated a South Central board, I think about two months ago, and I had an all right experience with it. Um, I liked the shape quite a bit. The shape was definitely not a problem. It just felt as though the wood wasn't at the top quality like what i'm accustomed to i got pressure cracks which is abnormal for me and i also noticed that the board was prone to chipping um i don't often chip boards but you know if you hit something at the wrong angle it's probably gonna chip this thing definitely chipped if you'd hit it at the wrong angle so it was an all right board if i paid 80 dollars or 70 dollars for the skateboard i'd be pretty disappointed if i paid 45 bucks 50 bucks for a board like this I think, yeah, that's that's about right. I wouldn't buy the Mellow boards if I was doing that. So, you know, if you're looking for a company, a board company from South Central, um, look for the steeper boards, unless you like absurdly Mellow ones. Mm -hmm. I think they're decent. Um, let's get to a Canadian one. Control. Okay, Control. control. Yeah, control. I'm on the slap. I'm on the slap forum right now, and oh, I'm so looking. So you can actually see. Yeah, who... it says control is Studio Birch and Scumco. Yeah, Scumco just started using control, and I was surprised because here's the thing: people either love or hate control boards, and most people don't like them. Uh, they're kind of like I always saw control as like the shop board wood shop. Ooh, disrespectful. Like, like the Canadian shop board wood shop. <laughs> So is con however, control in Canada? Yeah. Okay. However, I don't actually think the wood's bad quality. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got a couple here, and, and hopefully it'll register on camera, but I'll show you what I mean. So, um, and before I decided to fully throw them under the bus, I actually set this board up really quickly. This is like, you know, a Red Dragons board, Moses board. But I set it up on some indie standards. So here's the thing about these boards. They're a little bit on the thicker side. And I actually think they're pretty hard. It looks flat. That's what I was going to say. They're so flat. And here's the thing. <laughs> and especially on the nose. It's like if you put a straight edge on here, it's dead flat. It's like comically and, flat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, I mean, you know, it could also be the um, camera making it look comically uh, flat. I don't right? think, I don't know. No? That thing looks, the, it looks like it has almost zero concave. Yeah. Well, it's flat. And that's, that's both. If you like that, that's good, yeah. but that's also the problem because the main complaint that people have with control boards is that they feel soggy brand new. So here's the thing, all boards flex. And because right across here, especially is dead flat. Like I'm telling you, if I put a straight edge across here, it's dead flat. Uh -huh. a, real, a real board has about a quarter inch of concave right here. The wood's gonna flex. And if you have concave, it flexes a little bit but the concave also helps it feel stiffer. These boards feel, um, they feel soggy brand new. If you put your foot anywhere around like this outer two inches, you yeah. can feel that board flex because when it's already flat, the only place for it to go is down, which instantly gives you a soggy board feel. I see. However, however, um, when I was skating this, cause I started skating this deck when my, knee was uh when i was going through the early stages of my knee recovery because i figured ah whatever you know like i don't need to have the perfect board for me i'll just rock a control board and um you know when i was doing a lot of board slides on flat bars and stuff also my no complies were pretty low on this board because the tail's hitting too soon because it's so flat but um the classic no comply test yeah totally right but then so then i ended up setting up a real deck after this and it was a full se which is actually one of reels kind of mellower decks but like the first no comply the thing pops up like six inches higher i'm like whoa what mm -hmm. just happened there right and that's because real had the right kind of flex and it had some decent concave um but as soon as i started doing board slides on the reel i felt all this flex mm -hmm. so this it's not that this wood is weak. I think actually control makes a strong, sturdy board, but one of their main molds. So that's the other thing you have to understand that not every wood shop has one mold. They run multiple molds, but this mold is so flat that they feel soggy new. Mm. However, in the middle of the board where there's more concave, it felt stiff. And the real board, as soon as I started jumping on board slides, it was like, whoa, what is all this flex? Mm. And, you know, you don't think of like real boards to be 
soft boards, especially brand new. They but, may be ugly, but they are good. Yeah, I like them. I ride a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, me too. I don't know. I could get used to these super flat boards. It's mm-hmm. not what's necessarily going to make me skate the best. We could have gotten some boards made by them, but I just, I can't skate that good on them. Okay. Because I don't like the nose and tail to be that flat. All right. So if you like flat boards, you know where to go, baby. Yeah. Control. Uh, what's, <laughs> oh, what's they do, next? Hang on. Hang on, though. Really okay. quickly. They do have another mold. So let's... Ben, always making sure everyone gets their due. Yeah, well... Which is, you know. which is good, because my brand is just not giving anybody a so fucking look at, look at the ounce difference. of credit. Look, look at the difference between the this mellow one and the steep one. Can you see uh-huh. that? Yeah. Like... Right? There's like a big difference in concave there. You know, let's, you got like a half board. inch of daylight. This is a control board. It's another it's another Moses one. Yeah. Okay. I it's just wanted to see bros, the graphic. So. Very nice. <laughs> Very cool. Parting the Red Sea. With the Red <laughs> Dragon. Yeah. Didn't take you long to figure that one out. Yeah. No, there wasn't a whole lot to unpack there. When I was trying to do a board company, part of the problem was that I, because I've been reviewing boards for like three years before I started this, I had to be completely honest about exactly what I thought about the boards. Yeah. And like, how am I supposed to market a board that feels soggy new? And the I... steep concave ones feel kind of heavy. Like uh-huh. they're a little bit on the heavier side. So it's kind of like, okay, you can have a heavy clunky board or you can have a soggy board. What do you want? You know, I would have, how do you neither, market that? Probably I would <laughs> yeah, I... choose something different. No, you have to do what board companies regularly do, which is they, they sell their boards and they, you know, there's this assumption that they must be good boards because of the company and right. Like, and you just never talk about it after that. And if you get a run of crappy boards, you just sell them and don't say anything. Mm -hmm. You just put Moses on the bottom of them and call it. Oh, don't be too hard on those guys. They're good. (laughs) They're good guys. I've never skated a red dragon board. To be honest, (laughs) I didn't even know red dragon made skateboards. Mm, Well, I, I skated one for like two or three months while my knee was getting better. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you for the underwear, Red Dragon, by the way. My girlfriend yeah. my girlfriend always makes fun of me when I wear those ones. And the chinos. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't gonna go there. Uh okay. Next let's next shop. Next shop. Okay, Crail. I didn't bring any girl boards. Oh, though. Crail. So Crail is not a wood shop. Okay, the wood shop is like Dai Lang. It's it's a it's a Chinese name. It's right? uh and yeah, I'm gonna butcher Dai Lan Hua Huang. There you go. <laughs> impressive no please leave a like for that it, you probably just said something like really <laughs> do you want me to i'll read who it says as of 2021 dylan Hua yeah, is there other companies is sure chocolate sure, girl toy machine north america but it says pr- the price point boards yeah. and then it yeah. says this is where they send their european boards mm-hmm. now that says a lot doesn't it toy machine <laughs> Well, that's where they sell their price point boards in North America, but in Europe, that's who they use Toy for their Machine pro uses, boards. Toy Machine uses PS for their uh, for their pro model boards in the in North okay. America. And we mm-hmm. have Foundation question mark, uh, Alien Workshop, and then Euro price point boards, Plan B Euro price point boards, Element Euro slash price point boards. So Europeans get just price point boards. So well, we get price point boards too. Ooh, um, brutal. And, yeah, like it, it all, all those brands, if you're shopping the price point boards on the wall, if it doesn't have the PS stamp on the top uh, of it, it's probably not from uh, PS. Those like girl and chocolate boards were pretty bumming in the, you know, tens and early teens. Yeah. And then maybe about four years ago or so, I don't know what they did, but they they really brought up the quality control and they started making pretty decent boards again. Um, do I think they're the best boards in the world? No, I like a lot of their shapes though. They have like a unique concave and some unique shapes. Um, they take about three weeks before they start creaking and groaning usually, which is not bad. They do that for a couple of days and then they're still decent, but they're they're on their way up. I mean, how many boards are not on their way out in two or three weeks? Almost uber light, baby. It's almost impossible to make a seven ply maple board that meets everyone's demands, but you know, like, but that doesn't wear out. Anyways, I actually think that the Crail Tap wood's decent. Um, I would stay away from all the price point boards that come out of that place. You know, they're going to be like Crail Tap wood used to be. Right. Don't go there. 
Okay, DSM is next. So that is all of those Dwindle brands. Uh, we have Enjoy, Santa mm -hmm. Cruz, Almost, Dark Star, Blind, Palace in there out of left field. Creature, yep. Flip, question mark, Evison, never heard of that. Um, skateboard Cafe, rumored to be moving to HLC. Zero, EU slash Asia, Globe, Fucked. Madness, New Deal reissues. I would also take these with a grain of salt, too, because this is right. like slap internet sleuths doing their best to figure out where things are made, because where things are made is often a closely guarded secret. Yeah, which is, which is, I think, quite interesting, given the fact that I don't think it should be that well, secret. Pe so, so people either either have the woodshop as a badge of pride yeah or it's a point of shame they want to hide right given the fact that most skateboards are around the same price i mean i guess not as much as they once were because some skateboards now are 80 dollars. damn son where'd you find this i in my opinion if you're gonna spend that amount of money on a skateboard you should know what the hell you're buying because essentially the brand doesn't ex really mean that much because people are like you said people are always switching around so um, it doesn't mean as much as people think it does the right. brand has more to do with deciding you know may maybe if they have enough pull deciding the shapes anyways dsm i think is a really underrated wood shop i mean on the one hand there's the political thing about sending your money overseas China. Go on, Ben. Let it rip. No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to. That's enough. <laughs> we'll, we'll let it go in the comments. We'll let it go in the comments. And I've and I've written plenty of things from overseas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll um, say this about about I skated an enjoy board like a month ago as a joke. I needed a skateboard. I was at the skate shop, so I picked the dumbest graphic I could find. It was a Dwayne the Rock Johnson enjoy board that was like a yeah. day one song guest pro. I saw um, that one. I did not like that skateboard. Uh, it felt quite stiff to me. Mm -hmm. um, it felt like there was something that wasn't exactly fully natural about it. Like they're there's they're take they're doing something extra with it that makes the board like the flex feel a little bit different. It felt stiffer to me. Which you know, if you're a a bigger person, I could definitely see that mm -hmm. being a pro. How long did you ride it? I skated it for two days, I think. Um, okay. As soon as I got back to where my other skateboard was, I put that on and yeah. I didn't look back. I just didn't like the way that it that it felt. Like it felt like there was a layer of fiberglass or something in it. Not to that okay, so, extreme, but I could sense that it wasn't like my usual skateboarding so, experience. Yeah, yeah. Let's get it, let's get into those a little bit. I would say that a lot of stuff that comes out of DSM is definitely on the harder side. Um, mm -hmm. They're one of the few companies that's making like. So from a consumer point of view, I think actually they make um, like good value boards. So it could have also been maybe there was a little more to it, like the shape and the concave could have been throwing you off a little bit too. Right. Um, because I, I think if, if you wrote it for a prolonged period of time, it might settle down a little bit, but also stay pretty stiff. Now, yeah, that has been my observation that they are a bit too stiff for my taste. Mm -hmm. Like it is just... It has that hard planky feel, right? And, um, and something about that doesn't totally work for me either, right? But I think if you're looking for a board that's going to stay stiff a really long time, yeah, I think there's great value in those boards. Yeah, that's a very that's a good point because so, this where this is coming from the perspective of two people that have probably a bunch of skateboards lying around. So yeah, when it comes I'm, to like I'm spoiled longevity and stuff i'm not really concerned with if i'm going to be able to skate this enjoy board for for two months i'm more concerned with like what's the next three weeks with this skateboard uh for me gonna be like and if it's stiff then it's not for me but it definitely could be if you're looking for value like you said then it could mm. be a good choice because it's so not like i couldn't do tricks on it it just wasn't to my specific like no, sensibility, it, you know? it wasn't. Your, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't your ideal. But now right. here's here's another thing that's really interesting about what they do. So boards are pressed in usually I think stacks of five, and you must have seen on the deluxe boards, right? Deluxe is one of the only companies that does this. Uh huh. But they have the stamp on top, the Roman numeral. Right. Are you aware what that means? Yes. Which order the the deck was in, yep. in the stack? 
Yeah. And the ones are always the steepest. The fives mm-hmm. are the mellowest, except deluxe. I don't even think they, only they go do to four. five. They go to four. All of the dwindled brands like Enjoy and, um, you know, all the Rodney based brands, right? <laughs> if you, yeah, the Rod, the Rodney based brands, Rodney based. they get pressed one board at a time. Oh my so God. Every, so every single board will have the exact same shape and concave. Wow. On the one hand, if your board's staying pretty stiff for two months, even though it's super worn and thrashed, you throw on a new board yeah, and it's not going to be that different than the last one. So again, hmm. um, really good value from a consumer perspective. Yeah. And in terms of weight and thickness and stuff, they're not too thick. They're like a regular thickness. They do all of those, like you mentioned, what the, I don't know, all their super boards. Yeah, they do a lot of, uh, whenever I look at the 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 website, I'm always seeing some, there's like Super Sap, which is some environmentally friendly version of, and then also when you look at the plies themselves, they've got like a different, like, kind of sheen to them mm-hmm. and the they've got like a br- like a darker color to they look like they are not they look a little more techy than most skateboards i would say yeah well i, th- I think they are uh, so here here's going to be my assessment of dsm i think it's probably the most underrated wood shop and yeah, do you that's think my- that that may have something to do with the brands that they are in partnership with yes Nobody has a hard time riding palace boards. I have to be totally honest. I haven't actually ridden anything from DSM in like six years. I had an enjoy board once mm-hmm. and it was a great board. I had no problems with you it. You enjoyed it? <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed that enjoy board. It had it had like a picture of a dude doing the shocker hand symbol, symbol you know? Not much has changed. And, and my son was like, what's that, dad? <laughs> Shape, color mm-hmm. scheme, I don't really care about the graphic because I'm going to scratch it off really soon. As long as it's not like stupid and that one was stupid. Well, when you say color it. scheme, are you talking about the color of the graphic or are you talking about and the, the, plies. the plies? Okay, That's super important to me because like I, I said, agree. I, know, I know you don't like this graphic, but I, I love the purple and the yellow. Like, See, I'm not a, I'm I like not a yellow ply guy. Oh, I'm that's, not a that's yellow ply guy. I think the yellow top ply is, and I know a lot of people share this opinion, but I think it is the worst of the worst having that's a yellow top ply. That's interesting because it's one of my favorites. Well, and that's that's where taste is subjective, right? Indeed. I mean, yeah. you do have a purple Plan B board with a yellow bottom ply with a. I do. A, ancient statue on the bottom of it right where the truck would go so yeah well uh, for, so i couldn't scratch off the statue <laughs> oh well yeah this next one's spicy oh um, let's get spicy yeah because i'm gonna have to try and just like oh clutch. come on ben clutch let him have it uh man. you're you're on the channel where we let everybody have i know it. i know but it's personal Ooh, is it yeah, a little bit. I have bit. never heard of any of these companies that Clutch does. Lewis Cruz, Brujaria, Program, Northern Company, Visit, Raw Dog, Hotel Blue, Meridian Fixer. All right, I hope you Raw it's Dog the B, this it's review. It's the B list, right? It's the B list. Uh, B list? Mm, I mean, Anyways. we might be able to move down the alphabet a little bit. I got sample boards a couple times from them. Sample boards were decent. I had no complaints. Uh, I wouldn't say that they sogged out really any faster or any less than in anybody else. They were definitely on the thinner side. Um, maybe not the best for board breakers. I'm not a board breaker. Anyway, so after striking out in a lot of different places, we th- thought to see if these guys would make some boards for us. And and like I said, because I had pretty good experiences with the samples. Uh-huh. Right? This is where I, I have to be like a little bit lenient. Um because it was like you know a year into pandemic stuff right and supply chain issues were huge but we made an order so i want i i got a graphic from like the graphic was one of my friends from way back so i was going to get a a white full dip board oh and edgy yeah uh, yeah and with colored plies underneath top and bottom Uh uh-huh and square shape because I tried their square shape and I actually really liked it. That was what our invoice was paid for. Uh, six months. It took at least six months to get the boards, which isn't that unheard of right now. You really have to order ahead. 
we waited indefinitely. It was always like sending emails, you know, like, well, are they coming? No, not yet this month, but you know, so there are a lot of back and forth, just kind of like waiting, which I was lenient with because again, major supply chain issues. But in the middle of all this, they did a price increase on boards. And I think we, I can't remember if we paid a price increase. I got to be careful with what I say to make sure that it's all, you know, not like libel or something. Right. <laughs> Anyways, um, I believe we did end up paying for a price increase after already paying a deposit. Like you don't jack up the price on an already de- paid right. deposit paid invoice, but they did that. I thought, okay, whatever. We were also kind of desperate to actually get our hands on some boards to try and keep this company going, which had just been dragging forever because you can't have a company if you don't have boards. They also, at some point, sent an email out saying that they were only going to be doing one shape and you were only going to get one colored ply. But wow, it wasn't one like, colored ply. Yeah. Well, this, this is, is this is mid Rona, right? Jesus, one colored ply. Yeah, I know. But anyways, but it wasn't <laughs> like it. The way I read the email was that this would be like upcoming orders, not uh, a okay. paid for deposit. So they sent me a sample of the graphic, like just a, a screen. The graphic looked good. No problems. I was stoked on how the graphic turned out. So I said, yeah. And it's, so they say, OK, well, we need you to pay the, you know, pay the remainder of the invoice before we, uh, you know, make the boards and ship them out to you. Mm-hmm. The invoice never changed. It still said two dyed veneers. Square shape board, mm. full dip, everything, right? The yeah. invoice never changed. But when we got the boards, they were this lame, boring shape that sucked. Um, the finishing on them was horrific. Like just the edges, like the edge sanding, like they they looked bad. Like, and I was breaking boards. Oh, right. oh and the paint didn't slide. The full dip paint. Oh. It was like it, it stuck. Like you try and do a slide and you just like, have you ever spray painted a board and then yeah, you realize that spray paint doesn't slide? Yeah. That's what it was. So they gave me a full dip that doesn't slide. It was the wrong shape. And it honestly felt like some of the plies were like birch. Not That's sounding what... super clutch to me. I don't know. No, they didn't come in clutch. <laughs> no, like samples. Maybe when things are good, the boards are okay. But like in terms of doing business with them, I mean, you might be better off not... <laughs> Not You're having fired. a company. You're fired, Clutch. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't use them and I won't buy boards from them. Okay. All right. So well, that's Clutch. There you that's go, clutch. clutch. That was a mm-hmm. juicy one. Yeah. That yeah, was that's... a juicy one. Mm-hmm. Not that I think that this will have much impact on, on any... I Because I don't know who is skating Lewis Cruz boards, but... No, I mean, there must be somebody out there. Clutch is kind of big for like all the people trying to start brands. Oh, I see. Like, oh, oh, Clutch will do it. <laughs> yeah, they'll 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 send <laughs> hey, you an invoice hey, and then a things. different skateboard. Uh, yeah. Okay, what what's Anyways. next? Okay, um, oh, okay. We only have two left on my list, and they're okay. the big they're the big boys. What people have probably been waiting to get to. Yeah. So we got BBS, which is yep. Bareback Systems. Uh-huh. Um, that is every single board company you like. Like literally, I would say 50% of the industry uses BBS. They do have an extensive list. Like, pretty like sure. ev- everybody does, yeah. right? With with the exception of PS, which I think PS has lost a lot of customers to BBS in the mm-hmm. last like three, four years. A huge amount of people switched. Um, there could be various reasons for that. I'm not really sure. Um, but BBS, you know, like, let's just start with real boards, you know, like and deluxe brands in general, you know, anti-hero, whatever. Yeah. That, they're good boards, you know, I they last need. their allotted time. Um, there's nothing, you know, super special about anything that comes out of BBS. Like if you're a board breaker, you're, you'll break them all. They won't save you. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a variety of concaves, right? They have a, a ton of different concaves, whether it's flat boards, steep boards. But then there's also like... So generator is the like BBS generator. BBS is the wood shop generator is like the distribution company. And I think they deal with uh, small brands and shops and all that sort of stuff. And I think the big companies deal directly with BBS, Mm -hmm. but um, yeah, that's one of those like badge of pride places to have your board at. So many companies will say, you know, made by BBS because it's, it distinguishes them. But in my opinion, it's almost like too many people use them now. Cause when I was thinking it's like, was would I use them? Like, of course I would use them. They're 
known to be the best boards, you know, in terms of like uniqueness, yawn. Right. right. Like, oh, same board. And especially if you're low on the totem pole, you're just going to be getting like the stock generator, you know, BBS boards, like random. Which I will you know. say the stock, like the stock generator 8.5, good skateboard. Yeah. Uh, I've been it's skating that. That's what I'm skating right now. And it's a good skateboard. I have I have nothing to complain about. But I can all I can definitely understand what you're saying. If you're starting your own company, you know maybe you have a desire, especially from your perspective. You care about all. Yeah, you know, want something to be a little bit unique, a little yeah. bit custom. You want to you want to have... have a reason to start your own your own company. That is what I wanted. Yeah, I yeah. wanted to and and to be able to get the pull to do custom boards is you know like yeah, right. you got to have some pull, and I yeah. didn't have it. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like, what can we say about their boards, though? Like, they, they have great pop, especially when new. They have just the right amount of flex. Um, their concave is definitely, like, they have a bunch of concaves, but they're kind of stock one that, you know, the generator one that goes out a lot. Like, that's a great concave. It's, a, it's maybe the teeniest bit on the flatter side, like a medium flat concave. Mm -hmm. The kicks are, like, just the right steepness. You know, here's the thing, because 50% of skateboards come from the same place, <laughs> that's why when you try a different wood shop, like a different brand, it's yeah. from a different wood. That's why you're like, no, right, no, right. Because the, the variation among all the boards that come from this place is so small and minute that mm -hmm. when you have any variation from somewhere else, it's like, no, I don't right. like this. I can't yeah. handle it. I can't yeah. do it. Yeah. So That's, like the difference between me having probably skated uh, bareback boards for a year. I, actually, I probably skated bareback boards for two years straight and then going to an enjoy board. It's yeah, yeah it's no wonder that I had no a feeling. meltdown. Yeah. Hey, I almost left something out and you'd be bummed if I left it off. Well, please don't. Because I think we're done with BBS. I have nothing negative to say about uh, about my experience with those boards. And that's the problem. Good job, guys. You did too well. Yeah, good good job. Uh, Everyone this is wants you. They're not pretty, interesting pretty content. Prom. Boring, boring. There's nothing to discuss. You guys boring, are... Boring, good yeah. skateboards. Right. Okay, what did, what, what did you leave out? Powell. Oh, Lord. Where... Yeah, Powell. They, pa Powell makes skateboards? They, they make their own boards. Oh, Still, my God. I think, I, okay, mini logo stuff, I believe, is China made. But I think the rest of it is all U.S., like in Santa Barbara or something. So um, Powell boards tend to be on the thicker side. They tend to be very flat. They tend to be pretty stiff. Um, and they tend to have gross shapes. And graphics, everything about you could say everything yeah. about Powell is uh, yeah. kind of gross at this point. Okay, he, now now here's here's my one caveat. Uh -huh. Because they're mellow and they're not too stiff though. They still have some flex. They have the right amount of flex. Mm -hmm. Because they're mellow, they actually skate really good with indie standards. Mm -hmm. They're one of these boards that make indie standards feel light. I could ride Powell boards if the graphics were a little better and if the shapes were better. Mm -hmm. Like their shapes are weird. Like, have you ever looked at them? They have like just ugly mm -hmm. triangular weird shapes. I always avert my eyes in the presence of a Powell right. skateboard. They're blunt in the wrong places. They're pointy in the wrong places. They're yeah. like, but they skate well. Okay. So if you can, weird if you shape, can... but you kind of like it on indies. Yeah. It's like... <sighs> I can't deny that I can skate well on them. So, but part of really liking a board and skating well is you got to be stoked on the whole thing, right? Yeah, the shape, definitely. The shape's got to be good. The graphics got to be good. It can't just be like, great, I accomplished a trick. It's got to be like, this board's sick. I like that you point that out because I would prefer, and this is going to sound probably like insane to some people and that like I am being unreasonable and pretentious a lot need of it some more adjectives i would yeah i would i'm done qualifying i would rather skate a graphic with top plies and bottom plies and like with a finish that i like i would rather skate a board that i think looked cool than and i would take like a a 20 percent performance hit on that i'm going to prefer the cool skateboard it's like the same thing as if i were to go to the skate park in you know a Nija outfit maybe there's greater performance in that but i'm also going to feel like a dickhead 
Um, and I'm not going to be able to mentally overcome that barrier. So yep. maybe yep. Powell boards are really fucking good. They could be really good. Um, for I'm some not going to go that far. Okay. I'm not going to go that far. I All think right. they're I think they're unique. Uh -huh. I think they're unique and pretty skatable. Mm -hmm. Pretty so, skatable. We let. But, we'll I, take but that. I think. But I think they could be a lot better. You know what though? They sell. People ride them. They got their thing. There are still plenty of old people. And they're also doing a really good job supporting a whole ski skate scene around them. Well, that's that's the big thing that I've touched on with Powell in the past is that you you don't see any younger people skating like popsicle Powell boards that aren't mm -hmm. getting them in the mail for being good or whatever. Right. Um, there's a specific type of skateboarder like flow skate park kid that would get Powell boards around where I grew up and that ended up alienating me because it felt like if I was going to buy a Powell board, I wanted to look like I was flow by Powell and I wanted to look like the kids that right. were really good at the skate park. So sometimes it can have like kind of the the opposite effect, I guess. In um, your case, it did. And yeah. in some people's case, you could see how it could make them want to buy it. I think sure. it can go. Bo I think it go both ways. Definitely. Yeah. For me personally. It had the yeah. it had the opposite effect opposite where I didn't effect. want to look like I thought I was one of those guys. I didn't want to look like I wanted everyone to think that I was sponsored. Well, they also haven't been grabbing your aesthetic exactly either. Well, from from a young age, I was much less particular about this sorts mm. of thing like ten years ago. But even then, it was always like the best kids at my at where I grew up in Orange County were all you know flowed Powell stuff, and I would mm. just feel like a poser if I was yeah. like trying to be like the kids that were better than me. So on the one hand, good for all those kids that are getting all the stuff. And yes. Thanks, Powell, for helping him out. Yeah. <laughs> so glad to have you on on the channel, Ben, just to smooth out all the edges, make sure nobody's Little feelings are sunshine. Make sure nobody's feelings are getting hurt here. <laughs> well, the last one that I have on my list is PS. Okay. Paul Schmidt, as everybody knows, Professor Schmidt. I don't think there's too many people that like vehemently hate his boards, but um I'd say they they seem to have a higher rate of defects. A little more likely to have a warped board. A little, you know, you get these boards that maybe like I had a Plan B that a couple of years ago that delaminated. Professor. And, yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, apparently, so. also FA Hockey uses them. Welcome. Sometimes, yeah. A lot of the bigger companies that were using them switched to BBS. So, like FA, I think started with all PS. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, I think Birdhouse used to be PS. I think uh, there's there's a list of them. Though. Alien Workshop, I think, used to be PS. There's there's like a list of people. Element was all PS. Yeah. And then and then yeah, they all switched over. And mm. I've heard maybe it's like uh, the crown is slipping. It, yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily. Um, I don't think it's nece It was necessarily quality per se. I think it was production. I think it was capacity. Uh huh. I think BBS can just do it. I think they they just have a big, tight ship. You know, for my understanding is maybe that PS got kind of like overloaded and the quality control can't be quite the same. Right. I, I definitely. So here's me coming in in defense. PS has <laughs> like has like my favorite concave. Uh huh. Um, but it's not perfect. It's not perfect. But there's just something about it that like I. So I got this board here. This was a scumco before they made the switch to control. It's like kind of a flat concave here, but not too much. Like I set this board up and I'm like, oh, my kickflips work exactly how I want them to. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like for the little bit that I was when I was doing tray flips before it started messing my knee up again is like, so this is his standard mold. The one they've been running for like 15 or 20 years. It's looking really round um, on the kicks. Yeah, it. it it wasn't quite oh, square. Big, big nose. Yeah, nice big noses. I they like a big have, nose. Yeah, they often have big noses. They have like short tails. The noses are steeper by a few degrees than the tail. Mm -hmm. um, so you got these super short little tails that if they, that are mellower. Now, because it's mellow, it has to be short. Because if it was mellow and longer, it would hit too soon. Because it's short, then you get that a real easy scoop on things like tray flips and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's also like uh, something about this concave is like 
it feels like home and it's probably because i've been that's riding... a good looking skateboard i gotta say like that Dude. the shape of that looks very 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 nice it's such a good board i wonder if i have the other one i was going to show you but uh -huh. okay if you want to know if it's ps you got to look for that the laser engraving right uh -huh. there this one such a good shape like blunt kicks but like short tail so that's one thing about the boards from PS often tend to run a little bit shorter than a lot of the stuff from BBS, but mm. um, I've been noticing and you won't like it, but boards are trending a little bit shorter these days, uh. you know? Well, cause I think what's happened is like everything was scaled, right? Like an 8.5 was yeah, like 32.25. Right. 32. Right. 25, right? Yeah. But now we've come, we've come to a point where like a lot of tech skaters are like, no, I actually kind of, I want an 8.5, but I don't want it yeah. to be a, a vert board from the nineties. Yeah. So they're starting to scale stuff down to more like street skater dimensions in length. And it makes wheelbase. sense. It makes yeah. sense. I mean, I've been wanting that forever. Um, I have not. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. You want the longer boards. I do. Now I've mentioned some flaws about PS boards, like that, that you can get some deficiencies sometimes, but when you get a good one, they're like some of the best boards. And so it does, like it did look really, really nice. You know, I yeah. just haven't I haven't skated a, a PS board in in ages since I really liked element boards, but I did mm -hmm. like element boards quite a bit. It's just the brands that that, you know, PS sticks manufacturers. I just don't I don't skate plan B boards. I don't skate element boards you, anymore. That's why I, I bought plan those. B. That's why I got that plan B board was because I wanted them to be like the same right. shapes the same con the same concave and then i wanted to troll you but i yeah. couldn't yeah. i will just say on the when it comes to the long skateboards i had a revelation as to why i can you know be kind of picky about it which is that to me it feels like a shorter skateboard mm -hmm. is more reactive um than a longer skateboard so yeah i am not like i don't have the most you know finite and control with my movements and stuff and sometimes when i land on my skateboard i sort of don't land always correctly and mm -hmm. it's almost like my skateboard because you know the shorter wheelbase and stuff is more squirrely so mm -hmm. i like to have a little bit of a more delayed response on certain tricks like when i land my backside flip or something um mm -hmm. if my weight isn't exactly perfect I like to have some some give, and that's what I've noticed with the longer skateboards. Whole experience is a little bit more dull, and it's less sharp and reactive, which is personally mm -hmm. just works for for how I skateboard. Um, yep. I like I like everything to be just a tiny bit slowed down. I, I get why that would work. Yeah, I, I like that middle ground, the fourteen mm -hmm. and a quarter wheelbase. That's that's my favorite. Like if I was gonna have a board company made. I would probably choose PS. Okay. We were PS. we were tr we were trying, but he just couldn't take us on. He just couldn't do it. But that's that's who I personally would choose because even though I feel like a good BBS board might last a tiny bit longer, like because the concave is a little bit fl flatter on their and I'm just talking PS standard mold. I think that's the only one I've really ridden. Like I I haven't ridden enough same as you, like most of the brands that I ride don't come from PS. Mm -hmm. but when i get a good ps board from that old mold he's been running forever i'm just like this is the board that i want to ride all the time i've been saving this one like i can't bring myself to ride it i just can't bring myself to skate it the Come 8 on. and 3 8 Set one it was up. so good if i was going to be setting up a new board every two weeks and i wanted to try and skate at my absolute best level i think those are the boards that i would do the best at so performance wise those I mean, honestly, I could find one from BBS that would be the same. Let's be honest. I, I could find something that I would skate as well, but the PS mold is the one that feels the best to me. All right. Doesn't mean it's the best. Just feels the best to me. Yes. Let okay. us know in the comments. <laughs> Please leave a comment. Yep. That's that's all of the ones you wanted yeah, to talk about. That's all about, the ones right? I wanted to talk about. Um, Sam from Life. Sorry. Um, Sorry check him out, the though. Cut. Uh, no, well, he makes cool boards for the bull trolls and the people that want a really unique experience. Check out life skateboards. Yeah. I have a review on his board, um, on my channel, but, um, little no, does he know he's getting cut. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Sam. <laughs> um, but yeah, I wanted to, he's a good guy. I wanted to throw his, his shop in there. Any closing, closing mm -hmm. thoughts on this? 
No, I mean, ride what you like. None of it really matters that much. Just skate and have fun. <laughs> the classic. Hey, man, we just talked for an hour about this shit, but at the end of the day, who really cares? Uh, any yeah. one of those boards, any one of those boards, like if I just needed a skateboard, any one of those boards would do. Sweet. Uh, well, thank you for for coming on, Ben, and sharing yeah. your your expertise on this subject. I, I really appreciate it. I think... A lot of people will f- probably find this information quite, you know, useful because it is sort of the whole thing is shrouded in 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 mystery a little bit where where all these boards come from because the merry-go-round of of shifting and people I think a lot of people just don't know what they're buying. Yeah, and and then you know once you know you start like oh you grab a couple different boards you know that you know are from the same and you look at them you're like this is the same board. Yeah, like, and, and I, then you can start developing preferences and losing your mind. If I could say one thing, whatever trucks you like, just don't only ride change those. them. Don't never change ch- them. Because I, I trucks. actually completely agree with you because once once I was like doing a little change between aces and independence, and I was like, oh, mm-hmm. well, I do kind of like this about the independence, but then I do like these about just don't do mm-hmm. it to yourself. Like the. Mm-hmm. The le- almost skateboarding is a le- the less you know the better type of yeah. situation. I'm actually on Thunders right now. Whoa! Yeah. Oh my god! I've been god. on them for like three months. Ever Your since guy- our truck video, you just you just changed course. I had I had a reason to, but th- then I stayed on them. Like I've tried putting indies back on, and they're like so squirrely compared to the Thunders, and I can't pinch my tricks the same, mm. and they feel clunky and heavy and. Dude, I accidentally turned into a Thunder Guy. You can you could pull off Thunder Guy. Yeah, you know? now I just got to get the long front feebles, right? Yeah, yeah, get those <laughs> feet real close together. Get your swag <laughs> on with the with the uh, with the Thunders. I think I said it in our last video. I'm technically a better skater on Thunders. Right. Yeah. So basically, all that cool shit that Jamie Foy does, it doesn't really count because it's easy. <laughs> totally. On thunders. Because you know he just couldn't do it on indie. He's not that naturally <laughs> gifted. <laughs> Um, okay, now we're done. Now we're done. Yeah, thanks again, Ben. Uh, everybody go to Ben's channel. Uh, yeah. Subscribe. Okay, let's go. I'm hungry. Time okay. for lunch and coffee. Cool. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for doing this, Ben. I appreciate it. All right. Hey, I enjoy it too. All right. See you guys. Bye.